Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. Jeff, the last time we talked was about 48 hours ago. We were looking at an area at in the uh, in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, around the Bay of Campeche, and the National Hurricane Center at that time had this area in a 20 percent chance to develop area. Now it's increased a 40 percent chance. Jeff, let's jump right in. What is the latest? on this system and what can we expect here in texas yeah so we, we've seen some slow increasing of the in the potential for development down here in the bay of campeche and you can kind of see this this trough axis we've been talking about now for days this is what brought all the heavy rain and flooding to south florida uh this week and you can kind of see it laying here from just north of uh cuba and the bahamas back down to the yucatan and then kind of back over mainland Mexico. And so not quite into the Bay of Campeche just yet. But what is forecast to happen here over the next 24 to 48 hours this weekend is this trough axis is going to kind of pivot over here into the southwestern and southern Gulf of Mexico. And so you're going to get a lot more of this thunderstorm activity out here over the warm waters. And eventually, we could potentially see a, a surface load develop in this area. And, and one other thing to kind of keep in mind here with these types of, of setups, these trough axes like this, is kind of off to the north here in the northern Gulf. We have a lot of dry air right now. And then down to the south of this trough axis is where we have all the moisture and, and tropical air mass. And so as this kind of pivots to the west this weekend, it brings that tropical air mass uh, closer to the Texas coast as we get into early next week, and we'll take a little bit of a look at that. So I wanted to step through the, the model guidance, and again, we're not really looking at any one particular model per se as to where this is going to form or develop, and all of this is for next Wednesday morning around sunrise. And this is the European, and it, it shows a, a defined surface low here in the Western Gulf approaching potentially the Northeast Mexican coast. There's a couple of things I want everybody to look at. One, not so much the, the position of where the low is, but notice off well to the northeast, uh, we have all of the weather. So off the Louisiana coast, potentially approaching the upper Texas coast is where we have all of the showers and thunderstorms and squalls and stuff like that. And I think that's potentially something that's going to be relatively common with this system. Same thing here with the GFS. It has the low a little bit further south. But notice it's well to the north where it's showing all of the weather, all of the heavy rain and the squalls. This, this is uh, toward the mid-Texas coast. And so that is somewhat of the concern here as we go into early mid-next week is not so much where this finally forms or when it finally forms down here in the Bay of Campeche. It's these far-reaching effects that could come up well to the north. And you can see similarities here. Uh, there are some differences this morning between the location of potentially where there's a surface low next week. And if you look at the ensembles, you can see there's a little bit of spread here, um, reaching anywhere from the South Texas coast all the way down to the uh, Mexican coast south of Tampico. So there, there remains some spread and some uncertainty, of course, without any sort of surface low or surface system at the that has been formed yet. There's always going to be some uncertainty of where it potentially could form. And we'll talk a little bit in a minute about the potential track of this, but I did want to kind of go through, we showed this the other day, the moisture. Um, everything you see here in dark green is a lot of moisture, uh, that tropical moisture. And you can see it kind of begins, this is uh, late Monday night, early Tuesday morning around midnight. And that's when this moisture axis kind of begins to encroach here on the upper Texas coast. Uh, I do think we'll see some stuff as early as late Sunday into Monday. The kind of that main push looks to be in that Tuesday, Wednesday time frame, and you can kind of see it here as we step forward. Regardless of what's going on down here in the southern Gulf of Mexico, you have this big plume of moisture coming up toward the coast, and so that's where we expect to get some of these heavier rains, um, even if this system stays well down here into Mexico. And, you know, kind of looking at the steering, everybody's always, oh, where, once it forms, where is it going to go? Again, we're, we're focusing on the, the surface circulation developing potentially somewhere down here in the Southwest Bay of Campeche. But notice all of the high pressure here building along the U.S. East Coast, potentially really hot uh, early mid next week in the Northeast, um, maybe even getting up into the upper 90s, low 100s in mid late June in this area. So very high temperatures, high pressure building along the East Coast. But notice, this is uh, late Monday night, early Tuesday. Notice as we go forward into Tuesday and Wednesday, that high kind of builds down into the Northeast Gulf, 
towards the central Gulf. And that should push any developing tropical system down here in the southern Gulf of Mexico toward the west or west-northwest towards the eastern Mexican coast. Yeah. Again, with that said, I don't want to put a whole lot of focus on exactly where something forms. It's not really that important in this type of a setup of where we actually get uh, a surface load of form. And yeah, so Jeff, that, that's kind of what we're looking at. Looking at the last QPF runs, I uh, noticed that the uh, last few runs have that precipitation coming in a little further, at least the seven day totals. Now you're looking at areas closer to Houston Metro right there in that the two to three to four inch range. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of uncertainty still on the rainfall forecast. Uh, so we call QPF in, in the weather world. That's kind of what we call is the rainfall forecast. And you can see that the biggest challenge we're going to face with this is, is there's going to be a pretty sharp gradient or a pretty sharp cutoff from potentially a lot of rain to potentially not a lot of rain. And so that's probably going to happen somewhere along the coast. You know, the thinking right now is that at least areas kind of south of I-10 have the better shot of rain as we get into early mid next week. And, and what are we talking about here? We're, we're, we're talking totals three to six inches over a two to three day period. For the most part, we'll be able to handle that here. That is not a concerning rainfall forecast for us. Potentially, some of the concern comes in when you get these really big uh, tropical air masses, you can get really high rainfall rates. So the amount of rain that falls in a period of time, and it's very possible we could have two, three inches per hour as we get into early mid next week. And, and that obviously is 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 some somewhat of a concern. Um, interestingly enough, the coastal areas down southwest, Matagorda Bay down towards Brownsville, have been relatively dry, so they could actually use the rain. And if we could get some of this rain back here in the right. Rio Grande Plains in southwest Texas, yeah. they desperately need rainfall. And so this isn't all totally bad news. I know it potentially could affect a lot of people's plans and stuff like that, but this is some good news back here if we can get some of this rain on the Rio Grande. Yeah, and, and speaking of plans, Jeff, of course, it's Father's Day weekend. And until Sunday, maybe late Sunday, the weather is going to be pretty good. It's going to be sunny. It's going to be hot. But a lot of people may be heading to the coast. And I see you've got the uh, waves up there. So let's talk about the surf and the coastal effects for this weekend. Yeah, so you're exactly right. As we, as we go through this weekend, we're not expecting really any impacts on the Texas coast saturday and sunday sunday we might start seeing some showers and thunderstorms as the moisture increases and this is the this is sunday evening you can see the waves beginning to increase a little bit along the coast i, I would suspect most of sunday will probably be fine but as we go into monday you can really see the seas begin to come up along the coast and this is going into monday this is about noon on monday uh, and then heading into Tuesday, um, really start to see those increases. And so this is going to likely begin to produce some big waves on the coast, four or five feet potentially up on the beaches. And those types of waves with the increasing wind from the southeast is going to result in, in some higher than normal tides. So right now we're looking at one to two feet above normal. That is still below our thresholds up here on the upper Texas coast for any sort of coastal flooding. We usually got to get up around three to four feet above normal before we start having some impacts. Could we get there? Yes, we could mid next week. Um, the reason being is this is kind of a prolonged event. And so it kind of starts late Sunday into Monday and then it really goes into Wednesday and potentially even Thursday with the onshore wind. And so this could trap some of those tides in the bays and this is your normal kind of low-lying uh, coastal areas, you know, the Bolivar Peninsula over there near Rollover, possibly the west of the Galveston Island, some areas around um, uh, Blue Water Highway down in Brazoria County, Surfside. Those are the places that could see uh, some minor coastal flooding as we get into early next week. The other thing, like you mentioned, not expecting really any problems this weekend with the rip currents. Uh, decent weather to go to the beach, hot, all that kind of stuff. But as we get into early next week, this is Monday morning. You can see all of the red here, significant chances, high chances of rip currents along the beaches. So anybody with plans down along the coast early mid next week, A, you're going to be dodging the rain, uh, and B, the seas are going to be uh, aggressive and the rip currents are going to be strong. So you need to be really careful. We, we tend to lose a lot of people uh, with respect to rip currents. And this this is all along the Gulf Coast. I know I'm showing just the upper Texas coast, but 
This is going to extend all the way over toward the Florida Panhandle, Alabama, Mississippi. So anybody vacationing in those areas, be aware the weather may actually be better over in the Florida Panhandle area, but the, the wave action, the rip currents will be there and you got to be really careful with that stuff. Jeff, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for watching. We'll be having podcast updates throughout the weekend. You can stay informed and stay in tune by clicking on the Weather Insights YouTube podcast link. Be sure to subscribe and share with family and friends so they, too, can stay in touch with us and what's going on in the tropics. And we'll see everyone on the next Weather Insights podcast.